Hi, welcome to class 8 Geography, Resources and Development. Chapter 5, Industries. These days, our lives are much easier than before. I'm talking about cell phones, computers, lamp, electricity, and these changes have all been the effect of the industrial revolution. Therefore, in this chapter, we'll read about what is an industry and what are the classification of industries. And then later on, we'll read about factors affecting location of industries. And after that, we'll read about the industrial system and the industrial region because these two are a very important topic because it is not only necessary to understand this, but it is very helpful in connecting the dot regarding the other informations in the other chapters. Then in the end, we'll read about some specific industries like iron and steel industry, cotton textile industry, and information technology. So with no further ado, let's begin. So what is an industry? In this chapter, the definition says, industry refers to an economic activity that is concerned with production of goods, extraction of minerals, or the provision of services. So in simple terms, it means you go out in the world, you find whatever that you find. If you can extract it, produce it, refine it, and serve it to the people, that is where an industry is born. Now the question is, what is the use of an industry? Well, in simple terms, it provides value to the raw materials. Because nobody's going to buy fossils, you have to make fuel out of it. And then you have to make oil or petrol out of it and sell it in the form of energy. And the next topic is classification of industries. Industries are classified on the basis of three things, raw materials, size, and ownership. Let us briefly read about each of the factors. First, raw materials. Industries are labeled as agro-based, mineral-based, marine-based, and forest-based. That is based on their raw materials. So if you see agro, agriculture, everything has to deal with plants and animals. And the second one is mineral-based industries. So when we say minerals, here they deal with iron made from iron ore and other sorts of minerals which are used for manufacturing heavy machinery, buildings, materials, and railway industries. And then we have marine-based industries. By the word marine, you can figure out it's related to sea and oceans. And here they produce seafood or manufacture fish oil. And then we have forest-based industries. Here we are talking about resources that we find in forests like trees, wood. Here the industry is mainly focused on paper industries, pharmaceutical furniture and building material. And the second factor is size. So when we say size, we mean how much of money is invested in that particular industry? How many people are employed there? And what is the volume of production? That is the output. So based on the size, industries can be classified into two categories. That is small scale industry and large scale industry. So small scales are the ones wherein people manufacture things out of their hand. So some of the examples are basket weaving, pottery and other handicrafts. So here the capital is comparatively less and technology is also not advanced. On the other hand, large scale industries are exactly opposite of small scale industry. Here the capital is huge and technology is advanced. Some of the examples are production of automobiles and heavy machinery are some of the large scale industries. And the last factor is ownership. So based on ownership, industries are classified into private sector, state owned or public sector, joint sector or cooperative sector. Private sector industries are owned and operated by individuals or group of individuals. Public sector industries are owned and operated by the government. So all the government employees come under public sector. Joint sector industries are owned and operated by the state an individual or a group of individual. And in the end, we have cooperative sector. So in this, the industries are owned and operated by the producers or suppliers of raw material. A good example would be, suppose you own a dairy farm. So you'll produce all kinds of milk products like cheese, butter, curd, etc. So now think about what all businesses can be your client. You will serve the food industry. So this is what is the meaning of producers or suppliers of raw materials uh, operate and own the business. So here you're producing milk and other products in your dairy farm. So you're supplying it to other industries which rely on you. So now we'll read about factors that affect the location of industries. So we have communication, transport, land, power, raw material, labor, capital, market, and water. So if you see all the industries that are there in India, you'll see all these factors are available, easily available nearby to it. Or if some industry is affected by lack of any of these factors, then the government of India steps in and helps them by giving incentives like subsidized power, which means providing power at lower rate than lower transportation cost and other economic favors. And the reason government helps them is because industrialization often leads to development and growth of towns and cities. And the next topic is industrial system and industrial region. We've read this in previous chapter that is in agriculture that a system comprises of inputs, processes and outputs. 
and it is the same in industrial system as well. So here the inputs are basically raw materials, labor, cost of land, transport, power and other infrastructure. And the process refers to the wide range of activity that converts the raw material into finished product. And output refers to the income or profit earned over the final product. The next topic is industrial regions. So industrial region is a place where number of industries locate close to each other and share the benefits of their closeness. So some of the industrial regions of the world are Eastern North America, Western and Central Europe, Eastern Europe and Eastern Asia. And some of the industrial regions in India are, I'll put all of this in a map, just have a look at this map. Mumbai Pune cluster, Bangalore Tamil Nadu region, Hooghly region, Ahmedabad Baroda region, Chota Nagpur industrial belt, Vishakapatnam Guntur belt, Gurgaon Delhi Meerut region and Kollam Thiruvananthapuram industrial cluster. The next topic is distribution of major industries. So three of the world's major industries are iron and steel industry, the textile industry and the information technology industry. Iron and steel is the oldest one. Since industrial revolution took place in 18th century, it has to be the oldest industry in the world. And on the other hand, information technology is an emerging industry. The countries in which iron and steel industry is located are Germany, USA, China, Japan and Russia. And it is natural to believe that these countries also produce heavy machineries and cars. No wonder they have iron industries which is flourishing. The next is textile industry. It is mainly concentrated in India, Hong Kong, South Korea, Japan and Taiwan. You must have noticed that a lot of time when you buy any textile or garment in that it's written made in India, made in Hong Kong, made in South Korea, Japan, Taiwan. These places are concentrated in textile industry. And the third is information technology. Now the hub of information technology is Silicon Valley and in India it's located in Bangalore. Now let us read about some specific industries. First, iron and steel industry. We have read this before that it has inputs, processes and outputs. The inputs for this industry includes raw materials such as iron ore, coal, limestone, along with labor, capital, site and other infrastructure. And in terms of process, it is the blast furnace in which smelting undergoes and raw material is then converted into solid steel. So the output is steel, which is used by uh, industries across the sector. Look at this figure. It's pretty evident that how 8 tons of coal plus 4 tons of iron ore plus 1 ton of limestone will give you fine 1 ton of steel sheet. So just imagine how much of raw material is required to create that amount of steel, which is very less compared to how much of things you have put in. Now, special alloys of steel can be created by adding special materials such as aluminium, nickel and copper so that it gives that sturdiness and unusual hardness. Because you need iron for heavy machineries, so they have to be very tough and sturdy so that it can withstand and get the job done. Now steel is often called the backbone of modern industry. It is pretty evident that everything around us is built on steel. If you see ships, train, trucks, autos, all are made out of steel. And in fact, steel is also required for extracting other resources such as oil and other things wherein you need heavy machineries which are built out of uh, strong steel. And you need pipelines also to transport oil which is again made out of steel. So now we understand how steel is called as the backbone of modern industry. So here's a cool story. Before 1800 AD, these iron and steel industries used to be located where raw material, power supply and running water were easily available because it was common sense that why do you need to travel so far, get a job done. It's easy to create a business or an industry next to the location where it's ideal to find raw materials. But then later on, these things got changed. The thinking got changed. The industry was near coal fields and close to canals and railways. I think you can understand why it is near to canals and railways for transportation stuff. So after 1950, they started shifting this industry and uh, created them just on the flat land near seaport. And this is because uh, now we export a lot of steel through ships because ship is the cheapest way of transportation and you can export bulks of iron to different nations so this is the entire story so just have a look at this picture and it's pretty evident how industry shifted from locations from pure landmass to next to water bodies so some of the iron and steel industries located in india are i'll just put all of this in a map and you can have a look at this so just pause the video and have a look at them and the next is cotton textile industry 
So as we know, weaving is an ancient art. Cotton, wool, silk, jute have been used for making cloth. So textile industry uses fiber as the raw material. Now fibers is further divided into natural or man-made fibers. And uh, natural fibers are obtained from wool, silk, cotton, linen and jute. Man-made fibers include nylon, polyester, acrylic and rayon. So cotton industry has gone through a remarkable change. Till the industrial revolution in the 18th century, cotton clothes were made using hand spinning techniques and looms. So now we have state of the art technology and today India, China, Japan and USA are the important producers of cotton textiles. So with modernization demand rises therefore production of hand woven cotton textiles was expensive and time consuming they were not able to fulfill the entire demand therefore it has to go through the competition from the new textile mills of the west and the first modern textile mill in India was established in Mumbai in 1854 because of the warm moist climate and the port facility which is nearby for importing and exporting raw materials and they also had skilled labor which resulted in rapid expansion of the industry in that region and then from Maharashtra it got spread to Gujarat and today we don't need to wait for much time because humidity can be created artificially therefore the, this industry is flourishing and has expanded in India in places such as Coimbatore, Kanpur, Chennai, Ahmedabad, Mumbai, Kolkata, Ludhiana, Pondicherry and Panipat. The last and the final topic is information technology. So the work of information technology is nothing but storing, processing and distributing the information. So information technology is nothing but a support service wherein with the help of information they provide services and create businesses and the reason behind its expansion is because of technological political and socio-economic events because every country wants to be modern and to be modern it means you need to be technologically advanced and then political because uh, if you see a lot of jobs are being outsourced to a lot of developing countries from developed countries hence it's a great opportunity for creating revenue and uh, increasing the socio-economic factor of the country so again the factors affecting the location of these industries are if you are a business owner you look for availability of resources cost and infrastructure to set up an IT industry and the same is here as well and the major hubs of IT industry are the Silicon Valley, California and Bangalore in India. Now we all know that Bangalore is located on the Deccan Plateau where it gets the name Silicon Plateau and on the other hand Silicon Valley is part of Santa Clara Valley which is there next to the Rocky Mountains of North America. So if you see these two are the ideal places with ideal climate at their respective countries because we know here in India Bangalore has an awesome climate despite being in the tropical region it's neither too warm neither too cold and on the other hand Silicon Valley is located in temperate zone and faces the temperate sort of climate therefore the temperature over there is also neither too cold neither too warm so you see how they have similar climatic situation so in India places like Mumbai New Delhi Hyderabad and Chennai are the hubs of IT sector and there are other cities such as Gurgaon, Pune, Thiruvananthapuram, Kochi and Chandigarh which are coming up and Bangalore has always had a unique advantage because it has the highest availability of middle and top management talent. And with this we have come to an end of this chapter. It was a long chapter. I hope you found this informative. If you like the video, consider giving it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And make sure you are subscribed, you'll get an alert when my next video comes. Or if you want me to make anything specific, do let me know.